Hey guys, so today we're going to learn how to use GraphQL along with Express and we're also going to learn how to query GraphQL to get the data that we want. Before we get started, if you don't know what GraphQL is, I'd recommend heading over to see my tutorial for that. And the one prerequisite for this video is that you have npm and node installed. And to check that, in the terminal you can run node-v to make sure you have node installed. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is initialize our node project using node or npm init dash y and this is going to create our package.json file. From here we're ready to install our dependencies. So for this video we need to install and we're going to save them. We need express graphql express dash graphql and we also need nodemon. I'm going to be explaining these dependencies as we use them, so don't worry about that for now. So now, as you can see, these dependencies have been saved to our package.json file, and we have the node modules folder. The next thing we want to do is change this script instead of test. We want to call it dev, and we want this to run nodemon server.js. If you haven't used nodemon before, it's basically a tool in Node.js that you can use. Uh, so this file will automatically uh, the server will automatically stop and start whenever changes are made to this file. So on that, we can create that file by saying touch server.js and then we can run npm run dev. And this will run this server file uh, if it's spelled correctly. Server.js. If I run that again, uh, I also need to save my package.json file. So now it will work and we're ready to get started. So inside our server.js file, we're going to require our dependencies. So first of all, we need express and then we need express GraphQL. Uh, note the upper, uppercase QL and G um, and this is coming from express dash graph ql and now we're going to initialize our app using express just express and we're going to define our port as 4000 so now we can say app.listen on the port and we're going to provide our callback function which is going to just print out listening on port um, and we're going to append the port. So if we save that we can see that our files have been saved and our server is hot reloading using nodemon so this is exactly what we wanted. And now we're ready to get started with some of the GraphQL stuff. So we're going to define our root. We're going to say app.use and it's going to be forward slash graph ql and whenever someone visits this use this route, it's going to use express GraphQL and we're going to pass in graph IQL as true and this is just a user interface that we can use um, and we're first of all just going to say that schema is an empty object but we're going to need to create that to use this property but for now to test um, we're just going to make sure this is all working we're going to open Chrome and if we go to localhost port 4000 forward slash graphical uh, we're going to see this and we can see that we expected this empty object to be a GraphQL schema but everything else is working for us um, and we know we have our setup correct apart from this one schema thing so this is what you should see um, and now we need to create this schema so we're going to stop our server and we're going to create this schema um, by saying touch schema.js and then inside this server file we're going to say const schema equals require uh, forward slash schema and now we're going to pass this in instead of the empty object as schema and we can start our server again and we're going to start writing our schema here so before we can actually start writing our schema we need to import some things that we installed earlier so all of these 
variables are going to be coming from GraphQL, which we have installed. Um, and the variables, there's quite a big list of them. The first one is GraphQL object type. And then we're going to import GraphQL string, uh, GraphQL int, GraphQL schema. And the case of these is important, so take note. Um, if something isn't working for you, it's possibly that the cases here um, that you've used are incorrect. We also need GraphQL list, um, and we need GraphQL not null, non null, and we also need GraphQL boolean. Cool. So that's all of our imports. Um, next, we're going to go to the bottom of the file and define our exports. So we just have one export. Which is going to be um, GraphQL schema, which we imported up here. And it's going to be provided an object, um, which has a field called query. And we're going to give it something called root query. And that's what we're going to create now. So to create this root query, we're going to say const root query equals new GraphQL object type, which takes a parameter of an object again. And the first field we need to give it is a name. And we're just going to say root query type, because this is the type um, of our query. Um, and now we need to provide it with some fields. And this is when we start actually defining our schema. So for this tutorial, we're going to use books. So we're going to pretend that this is like a library and our API is going to return information about books. So the first field we're going to give is books. And the type of this field is going to be a new GraphQL list. Um, and the type of this list is going to be a book type, which we haven't created yet. Um, so we're going to create that now. So const book type equals new GraphQL object type. And again, we have to pass in an object. And the first thing we're going to give it is a name, which is just going to be book. And then we need to give it fields. And this time, the fields are going to be like properties of books. So for this example, our books are going to have an ID, which is of type GraphQL int. Um, it's going to have a title which is of type GraphQL string. And as you can see, this is why we needed to import all of these different things. Um, and we're also going to give it a field called available, uh, which is going to be type GraphQL boolean. Cool. So that's our book type completed. Uh, and now we have this books, uh, which is of type a list of book type. So now that we have the fields completed, uh, sorry, the type completed, um, we also need to give it a resolver function. So we're going to say resolve. And this is what's called whenever someone requests books. Uh, so it has two parameters, parent value and args. And for now, we're just going to return books. Um, and this is where we, you would usually get this information from your database. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to create this locally in memory. I'm going to say const books equals an array of objects. Um, and the first object is just going to be a book with an ID of zero, a title of Moby Dick, and available is going to be true. So if we save on that, we can see that whenever someone requests books, uh, we're going to resolve it with this array that we've created locally. But as I said, normally you'd be getting this information from your database, but this video is just about GraphQL, so that's what we're going to do. So now we're going to check if we have any errors, and we don't. And in our server.js file, remember, we changed this from being an empty object to schema. So now it should be using the schema that we've defined here. So going back to the browser, 
if I hit refresh, you can see that we now have this information over here. It's saying that we have a query, root query type, and we can see it has a field of books. So over here, we can actually write this query. Um, by the way, this writing this query here is optional, but I like to do it, um, just so you know what you're doing. And we're writing a query for books. And for now, we just wanna get the title of the books. So if we run this query, you can see this is gonna get the title of all the books in that array. Um, but if we want to see if it's available too, we can also add this in. And this is why GraphQL is so powerful. We can just get the data that we want. So if we go back to our array and we add another book with an ID of one, a title of Harry Potter, and available is true. If we hit save um, and go back to the browser and run this query again, you can see now we're getting the information about both books. And if we don't want the availability, we can take that out, hit run, and we're just going to get exactly what we want. So this is why GraphQL is so cool. So we've wrote this query to get all the books, but what if we just want to get information about an individual book? So we need to define a new field, and this field is just going to be book. It's going to have a type of book type. So this time it's not going to be a list of books, it's just going to be a singular book type. But now we have to define args because if the user wants information about an individual book, they need to provide arguments to define what book they want the information about. So we're gonna allow them to pass in an ID, which is of type GraphQL int. And now we can use this inside our resolver. So again, we're defining a resolve function and it takes a parameter of parent value and args. And this time we're gonna be using this args parameter so we're going to return books.find um, and this takes a callback function which is we're going to pass in b and we're going to return whenever book.id equals args.id you could do all this in a for loop and just check whenever the id of the book is the same as the id provided in the argument but i like keeping all this to one line it just makes it much cleaner so now if i hit save and we can see that there's no errors. We can go back to the browser and now we can provide an argument here and change this just to singular book, give it an ID. So we're gonna look whenever the ID is zero. I'm actually gonna to need to refresh the page because we didn't get our changes. Um, but now you can see I'm just getting information about this singular book. And if I pass in ID of one, it'll give us the title of the other book. And again, I can pass in different things that we need and it will return those. So another cool thing with GraphQL is that we can actually write multiple queries inside the same request. So I don't know why you'd want to do this, but in this single request, we're gonna get information about book with an ID of one and we're also gonna get all of the books titles. So if we run this query, you can see that this is what the information we get back looks like. So at the minute, we have set up our API so users can read information about books and also get information about individual books. Um, but if we want to get the full CRUD functionality, create, read, update, and delete, we need to use something that isn't queries. Um, in GraphQL, it's called a mutation, where we're actually changing information, we're not reading it. So in the next video, we're gonna go over how to write and how to use mutations in GraphQL. Thanks for watching, hope this helped you out, and I'll see you next time.